Hey Thriver, welcome back to the Hey Thriver podcast. On today's episode, Devin and I are doing a audit, an audit of our lives. And we picked one, two, three, four, five categories to go through to really talk about what thriving means for us in those categories and inviting you to do this exercise with us. We believe that you should not wait until Monday. You should not wait until tomorrow. You should not wait until the new year to start thriving. So it's time to figure out what thriving means for us when it comes to health, friends and family relationships, creativity, service-based business, uh, and really hone in on how we can take action toward thriving in those areas. Make sure you stick around until the end for your personal invitation to check in with us for a special New Year's event uh, in the new year. I'm so excited. Don't wait until the new year to thrive. Here we go. I'm Devin. I'm Shay. We're two wildly different women who took separate paths to building thriving creative businesses built on laid back lifestyles, quality storytelling, inclusivity, and elevated client experience. We work when we want to, we have freedom when we need it, and friend, we want the same for you. We know that thriving looks and feels differently for everyone. And it's time to figure out what it means for you. You deserve a life that you love, not just tolerate. You are creative. You are powerful. You are worthy. You are a thriver. Hey, Thriver. We're happy you're here. My eyes aren't the greatest lately. I can't tell if it's focusing on me, but I'm going to say it is. (laughs) I just can't tell if this is focusing on me, but I gonna assume it is it seems fine it seems fine (laughs) look at me (laughs) why wouldn't it oh hi Devin hi Shay oh let me redo that hey Devin (laughs) hey Shay (laughs) I I I mean first of all we just have 40 minutes on FaceTime bitching which is a good precursor to what you want to talk about today Mm. Mm -hmm. but in a way that will hopefully help our sweet sweet beautiful sexy smart powerful thrivers (laughs) our powerful thrivers uh I had this idea and it's based off of how I've been feeling lately and it's how we shouldn't wait until the new year to start focusing on our goals and thriving Mm. we should Take a little audit today, whatever day you're listening to this, we're about a month behind you thrivers. Uh, so we'll start a little earlier than you, uh, but this is dropping a few days before Thanksgiving. So I think we should think about what we're grateful for, but also combine that with thinking about ways we think we could be more intentional and how we think we could match our values and goals with our actions before new year and not wait until we feel a little reset. (laughs) I love that idea. I love that we're doing this before January in the like resolutions (laughs) or, or goals or, you know, whatever people do in January, that always seems a little bit overwhelming to me because I do kind of have to start thinking about those things earlier and really so I can decide. And just like you said, be intentional with like, what, what trajectory do I actually want to go into instead of just being like, fuck, I need to make some goals. (laughs) and I'm a hoe for new year's I love a good resolution I uh, it's it's my nerdy uh I don't even know what to call it I I I just love new year's so uh a little background I am 10 months postpartum at this point and just feeling weird. <laughs> yeah. I just feel really, really weird. And 
I, I'll come up on a year, uh, a little around the time that this is actually posting. And, um, I just want to start, uh, being more intentional and mindful about what it's going to take to feel like myself again. And I have to imagine that we have listeners who maybe went through a transitional period within the last year that doesn't have to be a baby um, or who's looking to make a transition and wants to realign with what they want for themselves. Um, Because thriving looks differently for everybody, but you actually have to do the things that make you feel like you're thriving. Right, Devin? (laughs) Oh yeah. <laughs> I um I I'm just laughing a little bit because I feel like we do this all the time. Some days we'll call each other and I'm like, I'm thriving, I'm crushing it. This is so great. And then the next day I'm calling you and I'm like, I am not thriving. I need to figure out how to get to that point. What am I doing? Why am I feeling this way? I'm yeah. overwhelmed. I'm sad. <laughs> I'm drowning. Um, Yeah, I think that thriving, we talk about this all the time, thriving looks very different for everyone and it looks very different for you and I too. And so figuring out how do you thrive in like all aspects of your life? Yeah. Not just your business, because if your business is thriving, hopefully all your other aspects of your life are thriving. But if you don't feel well in all your other aspects, you can't put all your time and energy into your business to get it to where you want it to. So it's really funny how all of these things just intersect with each other. Yeah. And to your point about wanting, I I mean, I, all these categories we're talking about today, I want them to speak to each other and live in harmony with each other. And I will always be the first to admit where like, I'm fucking up. It's like, when my business is thriving, usually I'm not being the best mom. And so like, I need to like intentionally think about how to fix that going forward and not just be like accepting of like how these seasons shift, like how these like balances get out of whack and just say, well, that's life. Like balance is not achievable. I want to be able to just be healthy enough to identify when these things are happening and are out of whack and fix it intentionally without getting stuck in a shame spiral about it. Mm, A shame spiral. Okay. Thrivers out there, everybody wait, raise your hand, wave your hand. You could wave too. How many of you have ever been in a (laughs) shame spiral? I have. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like usually pretty consistently in one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, right now. Yeah, you're right. You are. <laughs> but um, but that's why we're going to talk about this. We're going to get you out of that. Beautiful. So we're treating today like a little bit of a group exercise. I have some categories to throw at you and I want you to fit it to your life and to your goals and how you listener want to thrive. Devin and I will go through it a little bit. Uh, and we're literally doing this with you. That's why I love thrive so much. Um, so the first category I wanted to tackle, and we don't have to get too specific into this, but Mm -hmm. I, I want to like riff enough to where people feel like they have time or, and like, we'll get their own juices going about this category for themselves. Does that make sense? Cool. I like it. Beautiful. So category one, um, category one's health. So to me, this is like, this is mental, physical nutrition, fitness. Like all of those are kind of lumped into one category for me. Um, to me, thriving in this category means moving my body every day. Uh, it means, uh, reading every day and it means, um, I mean, nutrition wise, it means like consuming whole foods that I know help my mental health, uh, and don't make me spiral. So to me, it's, (laughs) uh, I am like super, super addicted to sugar and caffeine. So when I'm over consuming on those things, I'm not thriving. 
and there's something wrong. So just knowing those things about yourself, like what gets you off kilter and like identifying it without Mm -hmm. freaking yourself out and making it worse to you. When are you thriving in the health category, Devin? Yeah, I am definitely thriving when I'm consuming nutritious meals. And I'm going to say that in the sense that um, for me and my life right now, uh, at the time that we're recording, this is September, I am kind of at the tail end of a really busy season. My kids are in both in school. They have activities every single day after school. And I'm putting all my time and energy into like, okay, is their lunch nutritious? Is it going to get them through the day? Is it going to be, my kids need a lot of protein. So I'm like, is it protein packed? Everybody's body is a little bit different, right? Like my body can function on less protein and more green vegetables is when I feel my best. And then, so I focus all the time and energy and then I come home from dropping them off and I get right into work. I don't eat a nutritious breakfast, any breakfast sometimes. I like eat a half-assed lunch. And then by the time dinner rolls around, I'm like so fucking hungry. I'm like the worst person to be around. (laughs) And that's how I know in this moment I'm not thriving. And last night I was thinking about this because my husband's out of town right now too. So that adds another layer because Matt and I both travel a lot. And so when one of us are home, it's hard to be motivated to make an entire meal for just like three people, two kids that are like kind of like one adult meal. Yeah. And I'm like, do I make enough to have leftovers? But I don't want like want to have a ton of leftovers because I, I hate wasting. I think that that is a whole nother topic for me that I do not feel like I'm thriving when I'm wasting. And so – I'm like in this cycle right now, like, okay, how do I get into a good routine where I feel like everyone is feeling satiated, our brains feel really good and active for the day and that I'm fueling my own body. Um, So I'm not thriving in the nutrition part of my life right now. And I feel it in all aspects of my life. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel it because I'm like cranky. I feel it because and I'm like cranky to myself. I'm like almost like snapping at clients. And then I have to think, oh my God, they just texted me a question. You're just hungry, Devin. Like go eat food. Um, side anecdote. When I was a kid, I also would get really hangry. And my mom would literally like huck string cheese at me and like send me to my room and wouldn't let me come down until I ate it. Uh, so I, I have, I know myself well enough to know that my body constantly needs food and I'm not a three meal a day person. Yeah. I'm like a every two hour. I need something in my body or I'm just the worst person to be around (laughs) my poor family. (laughs) So I'm definitely thriving when I'm eating better and fueling my body with the right foods for me, um, which I'm not doing right now. So I'm not thriving in that aspect. And then I do feel like that if I move my body every day, um, that is something really important to me. I have not been doing that very well either this summer. I have been more sedentary than I would like to be, um, which is funny probably for some of you who, if you do follow me on Instagram, you think that I'm like outside all the time doing stuff all the time and I am, but it's still not enough for me. I have such a high energy level that I really have to move my body every day to get that energy out or it gets pent up and it turns into anxiety. Yeah. Um, And I do feel like when Matt is out of town, I am better at that (laughs) because I can, I feel like I'm not splitting my time in 10 different areas. I'm like, okay, I can get up before the kids go to school and I can get a bike ride in, um, on a stationary home bike because I'm not, I'm not leaving my kids at home. You guys don't worry. Um, Or I can like take the dogs on a walk when I do drop the kids off at school. You know, there's like other ways that I can do that. And then third thing for me is um, it would be really lovely if I wanted to read every day, but I don't. So I'm sorry. Sorry, readers out there. I love (laughs) to read. I just, I am just not someone who can do that every day. Um, And I like to binge a book. So like if I'm going to read something, I want to like all day sit and binge something. I have a hard time like reading a few chapters here or there. 
Um, but something I do need is I need to stand outside in silence for like 10 or 15 minutes a day. Like I need that fresh air in my life to feel rejuvenated. Um, I don't know listeners, if you're out there working from home, I work from home. Um, my husband works from home. So I potentially could stay in my house all day long and never get outside or get outside briefly to like pick the kids up or get in a car or do something. And I need that intentional time standing outside in nature, in fresh air to feel really good. And I, when I start to feel anxious in my day, which I would say generally, I'm not a very anxious person, but anxiety hits you at different times. I I know, okay, have I stood outside today? I don't think I've stood outside today. I need to go stand outside. Um, and luckily over the summer, I am much better about that than the winter. So now intentionally moving forward, since we're going into winter, I just need to remember that that is something I need to thrive. Mm. So that's, uh, those are my three. That's, Ooh. Okay. Liz Gilbert has this great bit. She's one of my favorite authors and she has this great bit where she talks about, uh, everyone having their own, user manual. So Mm -hmm. the Devin Larson user manual, best practices for uh, maintaining a fully functional Devin Larson. To me, it sounds like you have some really tangible things that you can put in that manual, like just from that, like for the rest of the year, can I carve out time every day to stand outside alone? Can I carve out time to uh, make sure I'm forcing myself to eat well before dinner and it yeah, sounds funny, we- but like, can we like write it down and make sure we're doing these things? Yeah. Can I carve out time to just a meal prep? It honestly yeah. it doesn't take that long to meal prep. If I just did that every Sunday night, if I just carved out time, okay. The last two hours of my Sunday night while I'm cooking dinner, if I just do a little extra prep, how easy is that going to be? I love it. So easy. I love it. And like, I have a walking desk, like, can I just put my fucking computer like up on my walking desk and just walk and quit feeling so sedentary Mm -hmm. while I'm editing in this season. So take a minute, you guys think about this health category and write down just a few things. It doesn't have to be crazy that can help get you back in alignment with your personal user guide, like how you would feel aligned and thriving in the health category. Um, Okay, next, I have friends and family, Mm. this category. For me, um, Uh, deep today, I know, I'm kind of a hermit. Um, I like cringe when I get a text or an email. I always, my first thought is that someone wants something for me or there's bad news or I'm in trouble. And so like, it's very easy for me to retreat and to not talk to anybody again for the rest of my life. (laughs) And it has nothing to do with anybody else. I'm just like fine being alone and I need a lot of alone time. So what I actually need in a real way, in a way that might seem psycho to extroverts is I write down who I need to call that week to (laughs) maintain the friendship or to make my family uh, feel loved. So um, I have a running bit with some of my college friends that like driving time is for catching up with my bitches. I'll call them and they'll be like, are you driving? You catching up with your bitches? (laughs) It's like, yes, I am. (laughs) Um, So Devin, what's something you could do to like feel like you're thriving in the friends and family category? Yeah. So as an extroverted extrovert, yeah, <laughs> who is constantly talking to people, I feel most energized when I am around people and I'm talking to people. I am not someone who sits on a couch to rejuvenate or like yeah. sits in silence or needs to retreat. I am like, I am feeling my best when I am surrounded by people all the time, talking to strangers, talking to friends, talking to everybody. So um, my family knows this about me. So I feel very fortunate and lucky that I get to talk to my siblings every single week. We're always on the phone. Um, we 
it, it's not the same day every week either. It's just like whenever a quick catch up. Um, I talk to my parents all the time. Uh, so much so that in college I would call my mom just like walking to and from classes and she would be like, what, what do you need? What do you want? And I'm like, I'm just like, calling to catch up. She's like, I'm at work. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, cool, cool. So what are you doing? No, like I got to go. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, oh, okay. Call me later. Cool. Call me later. And then I would like call my dad. Cause I'm like, he's retired. He'll answer the phone. <laughs> um, and then I, have friends that at times I talk to every single day on the phone and text every single day. And, um, I feel like during summer season is actually when I'm not thriving with my friends, um, for a couple reasons. One, we just talked about this earlier, but one, because I am either also busy or I'm calling them in the car or, they're also photographers and we're like typically shooting the same days. Yeah. Um, and so it can be harder to connect. Usually we find more time like during the week, but it's fewer and far between than say in their off season talking to my photographer friends um, where we're just sitting home editing and we're like, what's up? What are you doing? Uh, editing. What are you doing? And we'll just like sit on the phone even sometimes in silence and edit together. I could just get rejuvenated from like seeing people or like knowing that they're there. Um, but where I've not been thriving is, uh, I have, my feelings have been hurt this summer by my friends and I have not told them about it. So I have not been communicating well with my friends, um, because I don't want to make them feel bad for hurting my feelings because they don't even know that they're hurting my feelings, but, uh, I am feeling left out of things or they'll be like, Oh, you're so busy. Like I'll talk to you after season. Busy. Like, you know, busy is my least favorite word on earth. I'm like, don't, tell I me fucking I'm hate busy. it. Don't I'm tell me busy. I'm busy. Like I'm, I'm fine. Too busy to make time for you. Like yeah. I have, I'm quite good at my time management. Yeah. So I actually am thriving in my time management. And like my work time has nothing to do with personal time. Yeah. Like busy means I'm like, if you're saying like, I'm too busy to hang out with my friend, it's because I'm busy hanging out with another friend like that. Those times are completely separate. Yeah, I would agree with that, too. That's how I feel. So then I just feel like my feelings get hurt and I haven't communicated. So yeah. I have been I've been half thriving in this because uh, I stay connected to my family year round, which um they're very important to me. So that's great. But I have not been thriving in my friend category this summer. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think my major issue in the friends and family category is feeling like I prioritize my work over my nuclear family sometimes, mm. which isn't the point of having my business. Um, and that's like, that's why I struggle with the like mommy, like narrative sometimes like mom boss. And like, when people ask me for advice, I'm always like, I'm literally the last person you should be asking for advice because I love my family. I love my husband and I love my kids so much, but I'm not what you would call a primary parent or like someone that always dreamed of being wife and mommy. And it is like such a struggle for me to remember to like priority. They're always the priority, but like actually intentionally penciling in fun time. Yeah. Like it just, especially like both my husband and I have seasonal jobs and we're in the crossover section with our seasonal jobs where we're both incredibly uh, head down in our jobs right now and the season will end soon but it is a lot and it's just something we're gonna have to get used to and it's going to be a different thing to get used to every year <laughs> yeah I mean well there's always going to be more with your business hopefully right every year yeah. so it's like a new thing um and the kids schedules will be different every year they're both like, that'll change yeah in we'll have one more year of this and then my older daughter will be in real school. <laughs> yeah. The, Oh, I remember when Denali went into kindergarten and I got hit with a reality check. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, I 
have to follow a school schedule now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which I was not prepared for because I just took them everywhere with me. So the whole family. And I was like, damn, school this sucks. So hopefully you don't have, you're not going to have the same experience because your husband is a teacher. You're going to be like, this is fun. Yeah. It's very different in that way. I'm lucky that like once my kids are in school, life gets a little easier because my husband and children will be on the same schedule and you're never going to have that. I will never have that. Um, this, it, I love when things like this come up organically on the podcast because we can say it, but actually showing it's different, that thriving is different for everybody because everybody's yeah. lives are different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want to make one more note on the family front too, um, because I I do feel like I have very good boundaries with work in my family. You're, you're my like idol um, on that. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, like I also know when I need like, solo trips with my friends where I'm like, yeah. I need a break for my family. Or if I didn't have a job that allowed me to still travel around, um, travel with my family and without my family to have the option, but I still get to travel by myself. I know that I would not be as good at having those boundaries because I would start to get stir crazy. And I would start to like, I still need to feel very independent in my, as my own person, like as Devin, um, not as a mom, not as a wife, not as a dog walker or a chef or a house cleaner. Like I need to be my own person too. So if anyone else is feeling out there that they also need their own independence, I'm only saying that to know that you're, you're not alone. I feel the same way. In the lifestyle categories, something you guys are going to start noticing, listeners, thrivers, is that uh, I, (laughs) I like, it's not super fair to you, but I like uh, look up to you a lot in the lifestyle categories because you're the same number of years older than me as your kids are older, pretty much. So like yeah. you've oh, yeah. gone You're right. like you've gone through like everything I'm going through in pretty much like a really tangible increment for, for like the like years your kids are ahead of mine. So I'm just always like, dang, like that's that's how I want to be with my children. Like here's how Devin did it. <laughs> So it's a honestly rock. great. I'm glad because <laughs> just so you, I mean, I. I made a lot of mistakes to figure out how to get to, totally. <laughs> to a to a point where I feel like my boundaries are very even and I can turn things off and cannot turn things off. So um so I'm happy to share all of my mistakes. <laughs> I love it. I I'm just like a fucking workaholic and everything I want on paper is what you're like actively doing the work to do. And so when I get off kilter and I'm not thriving in the family category, I'm like, well, Devin actually cooks her kids dinner at this time. And I could probably like close work and do this. (laughs) Yeah. It's not to say I don't get back on my laptop when my kids go to bed, but okay. Like this is, this is family time, this chunk of time. Totally. Um, (laughs) So in the health category, I think this was nice to talk through and the family categories. We're both very grateful for our bodies uh, and we're both grateful for our friends and family. And Mm. so uh, especially this week, Thanksgiving in the future, (laughs) the present for you Our future Thanksgiving. Our future Thanksgiving. Um, needing, Needing change in some areas and to refocus in some areas doesn't mean you're less thankful. It means you are thankful. It means you're putting in the work. I think we like get in spaces where we feel afraid to complain for listeners, not watchers. I'm doing air quotes. We think if we're complaining, (laughs) it means we're not thankful when really it means we need to refocus because it's a priority for us. Yeah. I think, um, the only, the only way you are self-aware about these things is because you're like, this is a priority. I'm really grateful yeah. for this. So I need to make sure that I'm putting the time and energy into it. Yes. Yeah. 
I think totally. that's where the disconnect for me has been and where the insecurity goes when we talk about parenthood things and family things. And can you tell we tapped into my weak spot in category two? <laughs> <laughs> where like I I get insecure and weird and cagey about it because there's this narrative about never complaining, about always being grateful, about always being thankful when really like these things are very important to me. And just because it's not natural to me doesn't mean that that's the case. <laughs> oh, yeah, that doesn't mean it at all. I, I mean, I look up to you in so many ways that if there's a category, if not, there's no category. I'll gush about you at the end. But <laughs> but I feel like the category is coming up. Uh, next category is creativity. Uh, when you speak these things out loud, you know, we just asked drivers to write this down. Um, but sometimes when I'm driving and I'm listening to a podcast, I'll pause it and I'll make a voice note because mm-hmm. uh, I like to like voice memo myself so I can remember something later. And when I speak it out or I write it down, I feel like I'm speaking it into existence and I'm like making a promise to myself. Okay. We are going to be intentional about this. We're going to do this. Let's go, Devin. Come on. And then That's I get like more it. excited and hyped to do it. That's why we are absolutely meant to be doing this together, because if you are a verbal processor like Devin, you need to do the voice memo, like, and ignore me when I talk about writing things down. Some people are journalers. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) I try to be. I try to be. But honestly, I just have to talk to something. (laughs) Yeah. Let figure out what works for you and serves you and do that thing. Uh figure out what thriving means to you and how you can get there. <laughs> I don't fucking care how cheesy we're being. It's Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's Thanksgiving. I love, cheesy? I also love how- uh, that was a food pun? Ooh, there you go. I love how we're like destroying any chance this podcast episode has for being evergreen. <laughs> oh, Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving week and Thanksgiving. Um, <laughs> okay, creativity. you can just cut all that out. Sorry. I'm not um, going creativity. to. I'm letting I, AI edit our podcast. And so nothing's actually really getting cut. <laughs> yeah. I'm determined um, okay. of the dumbest brand. Creativity. Okay. So let me tell you that I have felt the ups and downs of this category this year. Yeah. And there's a few reasons why. So I'm actually going to start with the downers and then I'll go into the uppers. But okay. So the reason that I feel like I have not been thriving in this category is I think maybe like two standout reasons. Okay. One is because I am getting better in my craft and there is always this disconnect when I am when I am getting better technically, getting better with clients, getting better in 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 my my craft as a whole. Um, it always takes a second for my work to make me feel like I'm proud of it. Ooh. So so I'll be like, okay, this is like a really creative session. I love it. Like someone else might be like, that's such a creative shot. And in my mind, I'm like, well, I know I can do better. And so I might be like getting better in maybe a more intimate session. And then it takes a minute for like a larger, almost more like formulaic wedding for me to feel proud of and get to the same creativity level. So I have felt, um, and this sounds like so crappy. I hope none of my, uh, couples are listening because I obviously think every one of their weddings was so amazing and beautiful and the images are still beautiful, but in my mind, they're not quite where I want them to be. So I think that that is one reason. And then the second reason that I have not been thriving is that there were a couple of times this summer that I got stuck in the comparison game. Mm. And I doom scrolled and I was like, I fucking suck. I hate this. Like had all this horrible self-talk. And it's just because I started comparing myself to people who don't even shoot the same things as me. Like, 
why was I doing that? I think because you're an artist. Um, you're you're an artist in photography more than I am. And so I can see when you're doing it in a way that's more I, outside yeah. of you. Uh, in a way that's more outside of you than like another photographer that's really into photography, you know, because I, there's never much ego wrapped up in what I do because I don't really think of myself that way. Like to me, it's factory work. And to you, like there's a lot of joy and creation when it comes to photography and that's beautiful, but it's two sides of a coin. It's also really debilitating sometimes. Oh yeah. So I went through, um, yeah, like a week this summer where it was totally debilitating. I was like, do I give up? Do I quit? Um, and then (laughs) the other side of that coin is that I have been very inspired this summer by my kids. And this is going to sound funny because it has nothing to do with, um, with what you think I'm probably about to say, but they have been obsessed with the public library. Mm-hmm. Okay. Stay with me. This is taking a turn. So I have been taking them to the public library all summer, right? They go, they get their books, they come home, they read them, they're due. We got to take them back we, or we renew them or we get new books, whatever it may be. Never once have I gone to the adult section. And a couple weeks ago, I went to our library, two stories. I went upstairs and uh, <laughs> and went to the adult art section. And all of a sudden, I was like, found all these amazing books. Okay, so I just told you my first one. I don't like to read. I don't like to read, like, fiction all the time. Like, I, I am not someone who can read fiction every day. But if you give me, like, some nonfiction, I don't know what it is about it. I can just, like, crush that shit. So <laughs> I got all these books on, like – painting and drawing and nothing to do with photography yeah. and uh painting like how to paint a face like skills and how to paint your face and I just got so inspired like oh my gosh I cannot wait to take these other artistic techniques and turn them into photography and like and then all of a sudden I was like oh my god I love the angle of this face and I'm going to remember this and so it became this like the last few sessions that I've shot in the last few weeks I'm like so proud of them and I'm not even done editing them yet I'm like yeah ah I'm so inspired I feel like I'm thriving creatively because I'm consuming other types of art Mm. and I know that about myself I know that when I get stuck in a rut I like to watch really good cinema to be inspired and uh and then I never thought you know what if I start consuming other art books and now that season's ending, for me, my season's ending, I'm like, I'm so inspired. <laughs> I need to go shoot some stuff for myself. I think that's lovely. I think um, I think that makes a lot of sense. You you have this busy season of client work with you. You have like pockets of being able to get really weird and outside the box and inspired with clients, but there's also an aspect to this job and this work that is, I uh, there there has to be an expectation for your clients that they're uh, what you're outputting will match things that they hired you based off of. So in yeah. some ways, the galleries do kind of need to mimic each other and they evolve as you go. But your clients are booking you based off of past client work, so there's a reasonable expectation on their end that you're delivering a similar product. Totally. And it's that's formulaic why, and yes. they like it and that's okay. Yes. And honestly, sometimes I like it. Like I do like a formula or I wouldn't be doing this job, but yes. yeah, totally. Yeah. They're expecting something and you have to deliver on it. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that, but to your, to the point of like the way I see you, where you're truly a photographer, you're truly an artist where like I can see why by the end you'd be really fatigued by that formula because that's where you're getting your creative fulfillment is through photography and like lightly through other things but a big chunk of your life is this work yeah for me 
I, I would say my creative fulfillment is largely storytelling. I'm very Mm. happy that I stumbled into a creative job. And I think I infuse that part of myself, especially in my video work. Um, but if I, I just haven't been writing this year and Mm. I need to get back to it. I, 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 to this to I'm at the point where I'm like I don't give a fuck if I write a good book like I just need to write a book like it's getting a little embarrassing like I just you can say you Uh, want something for yourself and say you want something for yourself but if you just don't do it yeah that's just like okay (laughs) yeah you are such an amazing storyteller though I am always blown away by how you tell a story like I'm always inspired by how you tell a story I'm like man I fucking aspire to be Shay (laughs) thank you thank you um and they it there's elements of that part of myself in my job um but I want my creativity to manifest manifest itself in a in a book I want it to have yeah. pages and a cover and a back cover <laughs> and my name so on it. you're gonna have to carve out time for that I know when Just do you a- feel most creative to to write mm-hmm. like 5 a.m like is there yeah when miles sorry I try not to talk about them too much but when a baby that won't be named is screaming at me <laughs> and laying on my face it's when I probably should be writing <laughs> And then you're like, and then you're lying there and and you're thinking about what you would write and then you can never remember it because you didn't write it down. Yeah. And I, I believe that creativity is a practice. Like, I don't think it's a thing Mm. that you are. I don't think it's a character trait. I think it's something you do and it can be boring and it's, it's an action. And then sometimes uh, something comes together. That's really, that flows and that's really great. Um, What's that thing at that photography class where a professor asked half the students to take a good photo and the other, the other half the students to take a ton of photos and the ones that took a ton of photos ended up producing a great photo by the end of the semester and the ones who only had to take one great photo didn't? Yeah. I forgot about that actually, but I remember reading about that too. Um, it's the like same thing with writing. Like I haven't been fucking writing this year, so there's no good work to be shown. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I actually really agree with that. So I think we should talk about that just on a quick tangent for yeah. thrivers who are listening, because sometimes I feel like I've heard this from people at our workshops together where they're like, mm-hmm. I am just not creative. Like, how do you, yeah. like, how are you so creative? How did you figure out that post? How did you do those things? And I'm thinking, well, okay, I've been there too. I have also thought, how did they, how did they creatively think of that? But it is true. Or or like new photographers are like, how do I get to that point? Like you have to practice. You have to continue to shoot. You have to continue to practice your craft in any scenario, posing clients, uh, storytelling with clients, right? Cause like, you don't always want something to be formulaically posed. I mean, when you're starting out, sure. And then there's like the prompt phase and then there's the activity phase and then you just get really good at it and you combine everything. Yes. And it's like, well, you only get that way because you're practicing it. You're doing it a lot. And so I think people are inherently creative. Every single person is inherently creative, but in order to have that creativity come out easily, you have to just practice it. And it's okay to feel like you're in a creative rut or like you don't know how to do something because I've been there too. We've all been there. It feels that way, but you just got to keep doing it. I I love the argument of I'm not creative when it's like, you're a human being, bitch. Like you, <laughs> yeah. like the, think of like the most macho bland white bread person, you know, in a football Jersey, that person takes time every week to do something so silly. They sit there and they yell at their TV, uh, out of pure joy watching boys in tights move a football like 
across a football field while people in person scream at them and sing songs just for pure enjoyment of watching something, of watching people come together in community and do something. And you're telling me that that's necessary? You're telling me that that's not for anything other than pure, unbridled joy and creativity. <laughs> so I'm just saying- Yeah, like, and some of them get super creative. They're like painting faces and yeah. like they've mastered like a painting, yeah. a painted face that I could never master. Or like- the most because I don't practice it. <laughs> the most strict, uh, straight laced, uh, Methodist grandmother, you know, who is making quilts way more intricate and lovely than they need to be. Like there, there's no reason for these things other than creativity, other than being a human being, doing something extra past the point of utility, like just for the joy of it. <laughs> <laughs> creativity <laughs> creativity um the next category Ooh. <laughs> stems off of it uh, this a little bit and i'm gonna call it service-based business but what i actually wrote down is photo slash video um oh. So to me, this is just creative business. Like what should we be thinking about in our creative businesses? Like if we're thriving or not. Um, I made a lot of money this year. So yeah, I feel. <laughs> Get it, girl. Here's my thoughts on this. I'm also a fucking basket case right now. So something needs to change. Yeah. I'm not okay. particularly happy with my business right now. Um, which is an, an invitation to shift how I'm behaving. So my checklist for thriving in my creative business is easy. It starts with an O and it's outsourcing. <laughs> outsourcing. <laughs> outsourcing. Um, can I get an outsourcer? So a lot of it is letting go of my ego mm. and like, the thing is, too, I'm fine with outsourcing. I'm not super fine with kind of feeling like I'm a bitch sometimes when I outsource. I need to figure out finding people. I don't necessarily care about finding incredibly talented people. I do care about finding great communicators um, that don't take things too personally, that like really have pride in their work and getting shit done but also understand that like nothing's an emergency. Like I don't believe in photo video emergencies. I really respect other people's time and their free time. And so I'm just trying to find that right fit. <laughs> yeah. And that's really hard because somebody's right fit for, for them is going to be different than a right fit for you. Right. Um, yeah. Like I, I need mean, to be the okay right too. fit for the people I find. I mean, that's true. That's a thing. Yeah, I yeah. Yeah. I think that's also true. Um, I have one, you, you tossed me one that's it's working out. Um, yes. just need a couple more, a couple more Lauren's. <laughs> I know. I know. I feel the same way. Um, yeah. But when do you feel like you, or how do you feel like you are thriving in your business? Or um, do you feel like you're thriving at all? I do. I, yeah. I'm happy with the money that's coming in. Um, I, I was a lot happier with my clients this year in a lot of ways, but there were a few things that could have been fixed. Um, I think my systems for the most part are working out for the, when I'm finding the right client, my clients feel really, really served by me. And I've automated my communication in a way that works when it's working, but doesn't when it's not. So like, yeah, I, don't, there's a certain type of client where like, I don't have a great system for following up when they don't do their homework, when they don't fill out their questionnaires, when they're not responding to me and it's happened two or three times. And when, to me, when something happens more than once and I'm not happy with it, I'm the problem and I need to fix it. Yeah. Communication is maybe the biggest thing about yeah. a service-based business. And yeah. so, um, when it works, it's butter. And when yeah. it doesn't, it's tar. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah. What about you? Ways you're thriving, not thriving in business. Yeah. So I have a little bit of the opposite this mm-hmm. year from you. So I'm making less money this year than I made last year. Um, Part of that is because I did raise my prices and I do feel like there's always like a little bit of a lull um, in bookings. Um, I'm still happy with the income that's coming in, but it is less than last year. But I have felt, besides two, and I'll get there in a second, I have felt so excited about every single one of my weddings. I have found my clients. I have found my people. We are jiving. We are communicating. We are voice messaging. We are texting. We are answering our questionnaires. We are doing everything that I possibly could want out of a client. And I am serving the fuck out of them. They're like every single one of them by the end is like leaving me a review. They're like super stoked about everything. There's like no issues. They're not asking me when they're going to get their photos or their super eight film. Like they're like, we trust you. You're awesome. And I'm like, I'm fucking thriving. (laughs) I'm like vibing high with those guys. Um, I feel like I'm not thriving this year. Um, Partly because I did raise my prices. So I have raised my prices, which has brought in a number of parents who Mm. have decided that they want to communicate with me this year. But they actually don't want to communicate. They just want to tell me what to do. Yeah. Um, And so I need to one make my contract tighter and two I need to uh communicate better to people booking with me that I will not be chatting with your parents without you being involved in the conversations um I get that sometimes a parent wants to chat and honestly I'm great with parents so I'm happy to chat with them but it will not be without them yeah. and it and um and that was a challenge for me this summer was was dealing with parents who are like this is just a vendor that we're paying and like i have a hard time getting bossed around i guess <laughs> your your method with your clients is too personal for that to work anyway um it doesn't work for me it doesn't or work. them yeah in order for like you to feel like your clients are being served the way you know how, like you want that really deep personal relationship with them. And when communication gets deferred to a parent that doesn't really get that, it's just a weird triangulating dynamic. Yeah. So that has been a big challenge for me this year, Um, which might sound crazy to some thrivers out there, but let me tell you, it's just been really hard for me. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, not where I've been thriving. I, there's, I like, I do like that there's tangibles that go along with that though. Mm -hmm. Um, I like that you, you already mentioned, you want to tighten up your contract. You want to make it clear from the get go. So that's so fixable. That's really exciting. So fixable. Um, I love that. And, uh, I mean, the other side is tangible too. Like I could put more effort into marketing my business, right? Like I did take a step back from marketing. Um, not necessarily because I was like, I have a bad relationship with marketing. I need to take a step back. I just, I don't know. I got busy and didn't make it a priority, which is on me. Right. So I, um, I want that to be a whole other podcast episode because I've actually been thinking about the the sweet spot with pricing lately and um, the places where I'm okay with quantity. Like I'm okay with pumping out some glacier elopements because I know this market really, really well. Um, But my traditional weddings where I'm traveling, I'm like, I'm about ready to double it because it was a lot this year. I know you know that from like a back behind the scenes point of view. Um, I like to just audit things though. Like I know we're the same way in that way where I'm like, I'll do it. And if it didn't work for me, it's going to get changed. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Fun. We've got this. I, we love our businesses. Life is good. Life is so good. Um, now for us, because we have two businesses for my own personal thing. Um, I just want to talk about what thriving in this education business is going to feel like. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Can I go? Can I go? Um, I am going to feel like we are thriving when people are, because we're only going to know thrivers if you tell us or if we secretly stalk you. But I'm going to feel really good when we bully people into success and then yes. they're like bigger than they're like bigger than us. And I'm like, you're so fucking cool. I want to be just like you when I grow up. Um, that's when I'm really going to feel like we're thriving when everybody is like, yes, this is so useful. I'm actually applying these strategies and tips and um, everything else. And, and now look at me, I'm crushing my business mm-hmm. and I'm balancing my me time. I feel the same way. I, I mean, period, we can wrap it up with that. I, I mean, there's obviously ways to measure that a little bit, like email list growth and reviews from our in-person events and courses. But like at the end of it, I know we're both just so hoping that everyone can take action to take themselves Mm -hmm. seriously, to believe in themselves enough to too seriously. I, I mean, like take their like growth and success seriously, like carving out the time for it and not like putting it on the wayside. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's not like we're out here taking ourselves. <laughs> <seriously>. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I want to feel like, I, I never want to feel like somebody is in our world and not implementing. I think I would feel like we're thriving when I get a real sense that we're attracting people that are implementing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I just want to see people take action, take responsibility, make some plans, make some strategies, get shit done. And if you're thriving, I'm thriving. Agreed. If you're thriving, if you're a bird, I'm a bird. Um, If you're a bird, I'm a bird. This was very therapeutic for me, Devin. Thank you. Oh, it was for me too. I needed this. I I I needed this. Like (laughs) I did. I needed this refocus and reset to be like, life is really good and I'm going to make some shit happen. Agreed. And to you Thrivers, I hope you took a minute, breezed through these categories, wrote down what you need to do to refocus. And I have a proposal for you, Devin Larson. Ooh, can we revisit each of these categories in the new year? Talk over these last few months, this last quarter, and see if mm. we actually took um the time to be intentional about what we chatted about today. I think if we don't do that, I'm gonna be really upset. Okay, agreed. Agreed. Um, and then we invite you to do the same thing, Thrivers. Yeah. Ooh, maybe. Okay, I'm really getting ahead of myself. Maybe that could be like a live podcast. Maybe people like want to be like Ooh. on a call with us and they want to like, I don't know, chat it up in the chat and like tell us. You heard it here too. first. Um, we, we will include a wait list for the new year live, the live to thrive. <laughs> live to thrive. Um, live to thrive is happening the first week of the new year. We're going to go over all these categories together, shout it out group coaching session slash live podcast extravaganza live to thrive. Q and a at the end. Love it. Live to thrive. Yep. Uh, join the wait list at the link in the show notes. Thanks for podding with me, Devin. Thanks Shay. Thanks drivers. Thanks drivers.